Hi guys, remember Joe? He helped us to understand price to earning ratio in the previous video. While his business grew so well that he actually turned into a chain of coffee shops all over town. Joe is a good friend and he offers me to buy 100 stocks of his company with a stock price of $50 per share and he also pays a dividend of $3 per year. How can I decide if investing in Joe's company is a good idea? Well first, let's run a safety check for Joe's dividend. We can see the dividend yield is 6% which is very good. The paired ratio is 40% meaning that Joe pays the dividends and he has enough money to grow his business furthermore. That's good. If we look at the historical dividend we see a stability in dividend growth. It is also okay. We'll take a look at it in a second. And I also check Joe's balance sheet to make sure that he's paying his dividend from the cash flow and not by taking death. This is also checked. Joe's dividend history suggests a constant growth in the dividend payments and he grows his dividend in the last years in about 3.5-3.6%. Uh, so let's try the dividend discount model and try to value at Joe's company. But first, what is the dividend discount model? Well, the dividend discount model is a method for evaluating a stock price based on the assumption that the present fair value is worth the future dividends discounted back until today. Bah, that sounds too complicated, but let's simplify it. I assure it's going to be very simple in a second. Well, let's take a look again at Joe's dividend growth and we can see it's growing steadily and I'm going to use a dividend growth rate of 3.6% for my valuation. I also require a discount rate of 7.5%. That means that if I invest in Joe's company, I want to get a 7.5% in the upcoming year and in every year further on, because if I don't get that, I might invest my money somewhere else. Now let's see how we calculate everything and come up with the present value. Well, next year dividend is going to be $3, which is the current dividend, multiplied by 1.036. That is an increase of 3.6% as we required. But we should discount this future dividend by 7.5%, which is our required rate of return. This will give us the fair value today. Okay, this is for next year, but what about two years from now? Well, let's see. The dividend in two years from today is going to be $3. This is what we started, multiplied by 3.6% multiplied again or increased again by 3.6%. That will be 3 multiplied by 1.036 in the power of 2. Okay, but what about the discount? Well, we should discount for today. So we get the future dividend and we discount it twice, one for the first year and one for the second year. And we come up with the discounted value for today of 3 multiplied by 1.036 in the power of 2. That is increasing the dividend two years by 3.6% divided by 1.075 in the power of 2. This is discounting the dividend 7.5% per year. So if we look at all the future discounted dividends, we get an infinite series of the sum of all the dividends from next year until infinity of $3. This is what we start with. Multiplied by 1.036, which is 3.6% increase per year in the power of i, which will be the year we're talking about, divided by 1.075, which is a 7.5 discount rate in the power of e i. This will be for the current year we're talking about. Now, this is not a calculus lesson, and if you take my word for it, if we develop this series, we come up with the today's fair value of the current dividend or the expected dividend for 2021, multiplied by 1 plus the growth rate, divided by the discount rate minus the growth rate. Let's imply it to Joe's company. Okay, we take it today's fair value. We start with the expected dividend of $3 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.036, which is an increase of 3.6% of the dividend, divided by the discount rate of 7.5% minus the growth rate of the dividend of 3.6%. And we come up with a fair value for Joe's company of $79.7. Whoa, 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 pause the video. I'm running to buy Joe's stock. This is an excellent investment. Well, let's try this out in real life examples. But before a disclaimer, as always, this is not a financial advice. Okay, let's look at two of my favorite dividend companies. One is Johnson & Johnson and the other one is Intel. By the way, guys, if you like the content so far, please give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing and support this channel. Thank you very much. Well, let's run our safety checks. We can see the dividend for uh, Johnson & Johnson and Intel expected for 2021. The is 2.5% and 2.4%. The payout ratio is a little bit high for Johnson & Johnson, but they have a free cash flow of about $20 billion, so they don't have a problem to pay the dividend. And for Intel, the numbers are lower. First, let's start with Intel. We can see the dividend growth graph over here. We can see they're growing their dividend nicely. And if we run the data, we can see that the median for the dividend growth is 5% per year. The 2021 dividend is going to be $1.39, which also represents a 5% growth. That is excellent. Let's take everything and imply it into the model. 
Well, we start with the expected dividend for 2021 of 1.39. The dividend growth rate is 5%. The required return is 7.5%. We use the formula I showed you before and we come up with a fair value for today of $58.38. Note so far from the current price of $57.12. Well, that worked out almost too good. Let's try another example. Let's look at Johnson & Johnson, also one of my favorites. We can see they're growing the dividend very steadily. And if we do the same process as we did with Intel, we can see the median for the dividend growth is 7%. The 2021 dividend is expected to be $4.24. And the 2021 growth rate for the dividend is expected to be 6.5%. Well, let's take everything and implant it into the model. We start with the 2021 dividend of 4.24. We use the growth rate of last year of 6.5. And again, the discount rate of 7.5. We came up with a fair value of $451. Well, Johnson & Johnson price at the moment is $169.25. Something here went seriously wrong. Well, think about it for a second. Using a growth rate of 6.5% indefinitely, that means that Johnson & Johnson dividend is going to be huge. That doesn't make sense. We have a solution for that. We're going to use a two-stage dividend growth model. Let's see how to do it. Well, we're going to start with growing the dividend in the upcoming five years from 2021 until 2025 in a rate of 6.5%. This is what we saw before. Here is how we grow it. We insert the dividend over here grow it by 6.5% a year and discounted by a required rate of return of 7.5. But what will happen from 2025 and on? Well, we're simply going to use the dividend growth model, the simple formula we used to before. The input is going to be the dividend in 2025, which is 5.20. The dividend growth rate we're going to use is going to be 3.5. Rate of return is again is going to be 7.5. And we come up with this value discounted back until today. Sum everything up. And we come up with a fair value of $157.26. As we said when recording this video, the current price is $169.25. Well, the model didn't come up so far from the current value. That doesn't mean that this value is a fair value, but this is the number the model is giving us. Well, let's see what we learned. First of all, the dividend discount model is a valuation tool that helps us to evaluate stocks. We're going to use the future dividends discounted for today's value. As we saw, the model is very sensitive to the basic assumptions. As then someone said in the famous movie, assumption is the mother of all f Beep. ups. Well, if you know which movie it is, drop a comment below. That's it for today, guys. If you like the video, you are more than welcome to subscribe for the channel and give a thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.